Welcome to the Grow Strong Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Bell, and I interview business leaders who are committed to their own growth and the development of everyone on their team. If you enjoy my podcast, be sure to subscribe and rate it on your favorite podcast platform. Welcome to another episode of the Grow Strong Leaders podcast. I'm your host, Meredith Bell, and I love bringing to you leaders who are focused on their own growth and development, as well as giving others in their organizations the opportunities to achieve their full potential. And I'm so pleased today to have as my guest, Johan Laville. Johan, welcome to my show. Hi, thank you, Meredith. Uh, so first of all, thanks for considering Merck and MSD for the opportunity for this uh, conversation. I've listened to some of your previous uh, podcasts and your dedication to growing strong leadership is an area of passion for me. And, um, you know, really without strong leadership uh, and the bench of a strong leadership team, it's almost going to be impossible for us to get ready to jump into the game and it will be almost impossible for companies to be future proof. So, uh, so thank you for the time today. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for joining me and for reinforcing that importance. And before we get into our conversation, which I'm really looking forward to, I want to introduce you to my audience. Johan is the Chief Learning Officer in Global Learning and Development at Merkin Company, where he ensures that learning solutions and innovations are aligned with the company's mission to save and improve lives. He has more than 20 years of experience leading large global teams with a focus on furthering business transformation, as well as defining and launching innovative user experiences. For Johan, diverse talent is always at the forefront to achieve outstanding patient and employee experiences. He is passionate and dedicated to coaching, motivating, and developing Merck's next generation of leaders. And as a result, he has worked tirelessly to make improvements in areas like diversity and inclusiveness, digital capabilities, and on-demand learning environments. And we're going to be getting into a number of these topics in our conversation today because he's got some exciting things to share. So let's jump in. Let's start, Johan, with telling us briefly about your journey to your current role as Chief Learning Officer at Merck. Yeah, well, th- thanks for an amazing introduction. So I would say, first and foremost, I like to consider myself a driver of high-impact uh, learning organizations and teams. I've been very fortunate. I'm definitely not your traditional chief learning officer from learning academia. I sort of straddle that line between um, learning expert and business driver with a goal to bring true business lens right to learning as we think of focusing on business impact, ROI, customer experience, I love to think of learning with a modern mindset. For example, the impact on digital and bringing innovation with uh, tools and experiences and technology to the forefront. And, uh, and most of all, just rethinking and reimagine with this new way we work today, right? How can we drive an even more agile workforce as we think of reskilling and upskilling? But I come with a, a very diverse background, which I'm, I'm very proud of. I began my working career as both a banker and a small business owner on the island of Dominica. I studied uh, a Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. I did an exec Master of Product Development, and I also have a Master's of uh, International Business. I've been fortunate enough, as I mentioned, to work in areas such as product development, competitive intelligence, learning consulting, leading design and development, global teams. And um, in the last, I would say, 12 years, actually being uh, the learning leader responsible for the entire strategy of organizations. And um, I've been very lucky. I've been able to reimagine and lead uh, Motorola's Global Solutions University as a managed service uh, for learning. Uh, Partnered with uh, Comcast University to build a sales development strategy across uh, business to business, uh, business to consumer, and also enterprise. And today, as you mentioned, the opportunity to just uh, partner with Merck and lead a global organization that's really focused on our employees and just really focused on how we improve and save lives uh, for our patients. So it's it's been a very rewarding journey and one that um, I really enjoyed. 
Well, thank you. And, you know, the diversity of background that you bring really is interesting, thinking about our earlier conversation and the things that we were discussing and, and better understanding now all the different experiences you've had that you bring to bear to this first thing that I want to ask you about, which is you mentioned that Merck is undergoing a transformation of learning. And I find that very interesting. Here's this very large, well-established company. And so I'm curious, what was happening or not happening that caused you and others on your team to realize such a transformation of learning was necessary? Well, so as we think about what we're trying to accomplish, we're, we really want to strengthen Merck's uh, human capital with innovative learning solutions that drive business impact whilst also just delivering an outstanding experience. Uh, we're going to be focused on doing that in three key, uh, key opportunities. One is focus on building a learning culture, which I know is important uh, for us to discuss also as part, as part of this podcast, right? But we want, to, we want to enable an environment where everyone can learn and thrive. And then as we think about transforming learning, it's really about uh, designing and delivering in an innovative, frictionless uh, learning experience. Um, one that's in the flow of work, one that is easy for anyone to access. And again, learning comes with its own level of complexity. So our major goal is to really figure out how we optimize unwind complexity and, and really achieve our goals um, to strengthen our human capital. Now, as you, as you think about uh, what we do today, we always have the opportunity to improve the way we work. Um, there's been no, I would say, there's been no shyness on the subject, right? We've talked about the impact um, on the pandemic. We've talked about the impact of things like quiet quitting, uh, where folks are looking for more experiences. They want to feel motivated and they want to feel empowered at the office. And I think... L&D has um, an amazing opportunity to help drive this. But I truly think that you have to do this by focusing on an employee learning experience. And that's what we're doing different at Merck. We're putting the employee at the center of the equation uh, for us to be, um, I would say, more impactful with how we deliver learning solutions. But not just any employee experience. We're really focusing on one that can anticipate and provide the growth and development throughout right, an employee's life cycle. Uh, so for example, how do we increase the ability to attract and retain talent? Um, how do we increase the speed uh, to address uh, business challenges that we're facing today? Um, again, uh, coming through the pandemic, uh, businesses need to be even faster to innovate right, as we, uh, as we look towards the future. But very important is how do we re reduce the cost, right? The waste that sometimes L&D uh, brings into the equation on uh, developing things like, you know, we can get deeper if needed uh, areas like scrap learning, right? Where a lot, of, um, a lot of funding is spent internally, but you don't get that return on the investment. But for us, the, the challenge that we have through, through pharma, and I would say pharma in general, is, is really eliminating uh, the fragmentation across the enterprise. Uh, mm. Pharma is an interesting business. You have your commercial markets, you have manufacturing, you have your research labs, and um, it makes it um, a very um, interesting, I would say, um, organization to work within, right? Because they have such uh, unique needs, which really, which really takes us to the idea of how do we optimize uh, learning investments? How do we optimize our technology investments? Uh, to really enable uh, business success by prioritizing um, the opportunities that we partner on to drive uh, business outcomes. Mm -hmm. let's, let's look at some of those areas in more detail. Of course, you know, my ears perk up when I hear a strong culture of learning because that's, you know, my passion too. And so this idea of a strong culture of learning, in your mind, what does that kind of culture look like? Well, for us, we're focused on a couple of areas, right? When we say um, a Merck culture, um, we are talking about one that aligns to business value, right? Leads in the industry in execution, but most important, 
uh, positions L&D for value creation. We want to drive performance uh, transformation. We have to be agile and innovative, but we need to engage and empower employees. So the question is, well, well, how do you do that uh, from the lens of learning and development? I think, I think there's a couple of things you focus on. We have to make sure that um, executive leadership is uh, committed uh, to the L&D strategy and the impact that it can have on the, um, on the organization. Mm-hmm. We need to also make sure that learning is embedded into the employee DNA, right? So I'd ask yourself the question, are your employees, are your learners thinking about how do you develop um, their individual selves? How do they progress their careers over uh, the period of time within, within our companies? But, but most important, right, um, uh, the area that we work in is, is very heavy in, uh, in invention, right? So we have to make sure that from our culture perspective, uh, learning will enable and drive uh, innovation and invention for us because that is the success uh, for us as a company. And, and then, of course, I, I don't think you can talk about culture without mentioning our favorite buzzword, which is talent and skills. Right. Everyone is thinking today of a, of a skills based ontology, uh, something that skills first. And, and I think our new way of working is what's really driving us from a culture perspective to focus in the space. Um, we know that, as I mentioned earlier, right, companies are thinking about motivation, uh, thinking about a, a, a purpose uh, for being at a company and also thinking about uh, their career. So I think it's important as we think about uh, a culture that we also embed the idea of skills and talent first. Um, without without that um, without that, um, I would say, you know, focus on a strategy on how we bring that into the discussion and a solve for it. It'll be very difficult for L and D uh, to drive a, a strong cultural response across the company. Mm-hmm. Well, let's think more specifically because I know you've mentioned a couple of times about these learning experiences for participants and employees and getting them to think about being learners, right? I would think that you're hiring to that too. People who are interested in growing and learning, that would be an important aspect of that. And so what, so assuming you have folks that are really committed to learning, what kinds of learner experiences are you creating? Are you designing, you know, what's going into those to make sure that they have real impact with folks. Yeah, so as, as we talk about learner experience, right, it's really um, the impact to our culture, as I just mentioned, is going to be really dependent on the experiences that we provide to our employees and also any key collaborators. So when I think of experience, if we just take a minute and just think about it from the lens of integrated technology before we solve for the idea of experience, we know we have um, important tools at our dispersal. We have learning management systems. We have skills ontology platforms, like I just mentioned. We have learner experience platforms, learning content management systems, and of course, your, your HRSS, right? Everything that comes uh, from your HR systems. And so the question is, as we think experiences, how do these all tie together, right? Um, integrated, for our learners to just make it easy uh, to operate across, let's call it that uh, techno- the technology ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Now, when we think about at Merck architecting an end-to-end employee experience, uh, there are a couple of things that we are paying very close attention to. And, and well, I would say that's how we work today. When it comes to onboarding, we're focused on from the time an employee begins their relationship with the, with the organization, um, are they welcome? Are they connected? Are we providing the right learning from day one uh, for them to be successful? And then as we think of then how do we embed employees and, and the journey and the experience into the culture, right? So employees now learn how we work in a way that nurtures an inclusive environment, reinforcing the core values of our company, right? And our ways of working. But then that takes us into, of course, our mandatory training, right? In places like pharma, in places like banking, as you can imagine, right? We, we work under um, heavy regulatory um, mm. uh, industry, right? We have heavy regulated industry. So how do we understand the mindset of what that means uh, for us as a company? 
um, how do we make sure we provide the right knowledge and key behavior so we can empower everyone as we think of opportunities around mandatory quality and, and other compliance opportunities for us. And then there's the three that I think that are extremely important, right? And it really follows employees along their journey as we think of journey and experiences. We have what we call um, our in-role development, right? So this is where we focus on journeys and experiences that allow our employees to grow their functional competencies, uh, to learn how to execute against uh, business processes and business priorities. And then of course, who doesn't want to grow their career, right? Um, the whole idea is if we, if we do an amazing job onboarding and finding the right talent, is we wanna maintain a relationship and grow the career across the company. Mm -hmm. So how do we develop core transferable skills uh, that allow employees uh, from the day that they've joined us uh, to be able to learn, grow and accelerate their talent um, across the company with us. And then something that actually got us together, right, Meredith, is everything across leadership and development. Mm -hmm. I think that's at the core, right, of uh, almost every company. But how do we allow and how do we drive leaders to build their skills in a very agile manner? Right, to allow them to make sure that we develop the right competencies uh, to allow, um, I would say, our leaders to be highly functional, I have no pun here, but leading us into the future. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of leaders, one of the things that you had mentioned was, was and, and you used the word journey already related to the employees, but this journey of leadership across all parts of the company because you had talked about, you know, and this is not unusual for any large company, is to have these segmented areas, each doing its own thing. And yet you have this vision that I'm sure is shared by many others there at Merck to have a journey for around leadership that's a way to develop them more effectively. So talk about what what the current situation has been or what's been in the past and what is it you're looking to do differently going forward? Yeah, I, I will do just maybe a, a little plug for us as a company. Uh, we publish our ESG report yearly and our most recent ESG report is now available um, off of the off of the company company's main website. I, I would say to anyone, you know, go take a look and you, you will be able to see there from a, um, a very interesting point of view, just some of the leadership and development opportunities uh, that we have at Merck and also see the focus that we have on developing our leaders. But I, I did something interesting when, when we were, when I was thinking about getting together with you on this one, I went, I went and I looked for a definition of what is a strong leader. And um, I found this uh, very interesting definition from uh, Indeed. I will, uh, let's see if I can read it here for a minute. But it says here, yeah, strong leadership is when you can encourage, motivate, inspire, and challenge your team to produce their best work. Uh, strong leadership connects a team together through a common purpose and builds relationships in the workplace that allow for effective communication, more creativity, and better problem solving skills. So just imagine, right, as, a, as an L&D um, organization, if you're able to accomplish everything that's within that definition, I think that's a very powerful statement. But um, as I mentioned at Merck, we're really empowered to develop leaders at all parts and across the company. But what we're doing different as we rethink um, the idea of, of how you prepare and how you develop leaders is from a few uh, key points of, of perspective. So one, how do we identify very early employees who have the potential to become leaders, right, from the very beginning? And once we do that, Right. What are those mentorship, coaching and formal programs could we enroll uh, these employees in to help nurture the characteristic and skill um, required to align to, again, back to culture, our ways of working, our company culture and the future needs. So it's really about nurturing and preparing. But then once these employees right, gain the opportunity to finally become for the first time a people leader, then the question is, how do we prepare them to lead? Right? What are those leadership journeys we build to support over a period of time? So we all have in our companies, right? for example, the first time people lead up. 
But then how do we continue those journeys along so that finally we can support our leaders, right, who become hypo? What are the formal programs, right, uh, that we can put them through to help support their career mobility, for example, from first-time manager to, to becoming an executive, right? So we're really empowered to make certain that all our leaders feel supported, right? That, um, again, strong leadership means that every member of the team feels empowered. And then we also make sure that our leaders have um, prepared or they have a vision, right, that they can see ahead of what the company needs to do to grow, right, and to continue to become successful, but also how do we empower leaders and encourage them to work with other strong leaders as we um, as we develop uh, their skills um, along the way? Mm-hmm. Well, I love that definition. First of all, as a great find, it, it's so congruent with our our own thoughts and writing uh, about that very thing. And I like the fact that you're you're really describing what we had talked about before and the word you use today, this journey where people have the opportunity to see possibilities. I'm kind of curious for those who have great potential as, you know, a really high performing employee, but really aren't interested in being a people leader. Have you created a track for people like that, that have have said, I really don't want to lead a team because we have so many, as you know, technically expert people that really don't want that role, but they want opportunities to grow and learn. That's that's a really great question. I I firmly believe that you need leadership for all, right? So um, this is not Merck related. Let's just, let's just uh, maybe, let's figure a couple percentages, right? Uh, Let's make the assumption that um, you have uh, 100,000 people uh, within the, within the global footprint of your company, right? At minimum 10 to 12% of these individuals will be leaders of people, right? Uh, The question is, what do you do with everyone else? And so I think it's important to do a few things really well. Leadership is not just about leading. It's about um, how do you interact from the lens of mentorship? Um, How do you interact from the perspective of being a coach? You don't have to be a leader of people to be an effective coach. Um, How do you um, uh, interact from the perspective of um, uh, partnering across opportunities where we need to hire for diversity, hire for inclusion, right? As we rethink um, what it means to have uh, talent within the walls of, um, of a company. And so the short answer is yes. Um, in fact, uh, we, are, we are so focused on uh, developing uh, opportunities for all people leaders as we rethink what our new learner experience is going to be across our technology. One of the first uh, major journeys that, that will be launched will be a leadership for all, where anyone within the company walls will be able to click in and understand the impact that leadership has on the company culture and also be provided with assets to help them uh, just develop as an individual. That's so great. Because I like that emphasis on everyone has personal leadership responsibility as well as capability. Correct. Uh, Because we all have to lead ourselves. We can't rely on the person who has that role of manager to lead us in every way. So I think that's it's very commendable and important because I think it gets overlooked a lot of times when organizations focus on developing people with the title of leader and and think of it more as a positional developmental structure. But in fact, I love that leadership for all. I want to keep up with you on how that's developing and growing. I'm curious too, Johan, with your vast experience, what would you say you're most proud of regarding the creation of these various development opportunities for folks, both leaders yeah, well, and employees. Yeah, well, I'll tell you. So, so Merck takes a lot of pride um, in the way our company manages because we know that, for example, ethical leadership, right, um, in turn promotes a high performance and uh, and also uh, company company loyalty, right. Um, our leaders guide our purpose uh, to use the power of leading edge science to save and improve lives around the world. So for 
for us, leadership is like really the foundation of everything we do here as a company. Um, again, our company is re really supports uh, global diversity and inclusion, right? It's critical uh, for our purpose as we improve, uh, I would say, the power of leading edge sciences, right? As we think of improving lives around the world. Uh, so in summary, at, at Merck, we do a really great job in both um, identifying, nurturing, and also promoting and challenging a very diverse group of leaders and also the leadership bench. Uh, my, my most proud moment is knowing that L&D is at the center of that strategy, right? So as we think of leadership, as we think of leadership development, uh, not just um, from the lens of first time uh, people leader, right? But we, we are part of the company strategy and the culture as we think of how we identify you from early on, right? And all the way through um, to our executive leadership on how do we partner to make sure that we're really focused on the impact that leadership can have on the success for the company. Mm -hmm. That's great. So here's, here's a final question I want to ask you, and this has to do with the most important lessons that you have learned as a leader that might be valuable for my listeners? Uh, that's, so that's a tough one, right? So I think if, if we stay with the theme of, of leadership, um, I would say I fall into the category of both being a servant and a, and a charismatic leader, right? Now that can be a little bit challenging, right? So if you think about um, a servant leader, right? You're really focused on um, those who make decisions, right? Uh, but you, you also have the idea of uh, empathy, empathy, awareness, persuasion, and, um, and a lot of stewardship. And then if you think, if you think of um, the other side of the coin, which is the charismatic uh, the side of the coin, right? Then you're looking at um, uh, humility, um, substance, compassion, confidence. And so it's, it's always been interesting, right? How, how do you, how do you like drive decisions and be impactful, but all, also be compassionate at the same time, especially when we're thinking about um, uh, transformations? Um, so for me, right, as, um, as I think of maybe lessons, right, I think it's really important uh, for leaders to do a few things well. And not just leaders, but folks like myself and yourself who partner across the industry to help influence, to help coach um, what the outcome of strong leaders could be for us, right? I think it's important um, that, that we make certain that um, talent is at the forefront, um, of all of our conversations from the perspective of leadership, innovation. Um, uh, I think we need to make sure that our leaders, uh, we could smart uh, regarding technology, right? Um, how do we prepare our leaders to have that digital conversation, you know, the conversations around data and analytics? Uh, I think it's important for us to think about um, how do we make sure we maintain uh, leaders at, uh, strategic and also visionary, folks that maybe uh, love the idea of blue oceans, right? And then, of course, right, you know, very customer centric and, and uh, customer focused. But I think it's also important uh, for leaders to be very self aware, resilient. Um, it's important to think uh, I'm a family first. Uh, I think it's very important for us to realize that we try to do two things very well. Uh, we, we, you know, we try to make sure that our families stay healthy and, and, um, and we can have great relationships both at work and at home. So I think it's important to have a good balance. But then at the end of the day, um, I think it's important um, as, we, as we think of you know, things that I've learned and maybe lessons that could help uh, uh, impact maybe how we, how we think as leaders, I think it's important that leaders roll up their sleeves and get a little dirty every once in a while. Um, I think the idea that, um, you know, you sit back and and just have that opportunity to have decisions brought to you. And I, I think it's important for you to uh, get down in the trenches, trenches of your team every once in a while, understand what the team and the team challenges are, and just roll up your sleeves and partner to, uh, to drive uh, the impactful solutions out there. Mm -hmm. No, that, that last insight, I think, is so important because there's so much you can learn isn't there by working side by side with the folks that are doing the work every day. What have you found to be a really important takeaway in rolling up your sleeves and getting dirty with, with some of the folks that are out there doing that work? 
I think it's important to get to know as many people as you can within the organization as a leader. Um, there are so many bright minds and there's so many ideas on what we can do differently when it comes to everything you can think of, business impact, right? Um, uh, driving new solutions. It's important for us to listen in as many places as we can because I think it influences the, um, the, the successful outcomes. That's great. You're so right. There's so much richness in the experiences of, of the folks that are doing the work if we take time to ask the questions and learn from them. There's, there's just so much to learn. Johan, this is so great. I wonder if you have any other thoughts or ideas um, that you would like to share with my listeners before we wrap up. Um, I would say sure. You know, from the perspective of L&D, as we just tie this all together, I think it's extremely important for us to think of the creative ways to successfully embed learning into our companies, right, uh, from the lens of culture. Uh, we need to address um, how we break down silos, um, alignment and prioritization to, to business and, uh, and business solutions and impacts, culture, which we started with. Um, understand the culture of your company and, and determine how best L&D can help support uh, the cultural outcomes uh, that the company, um, the company is, uh, is driving. And of course, uh, I always like to say, and this may be a little bit of my, of my engineering background, right? Um, really think about operations. Um, how can we continuously uh, drive uh, the right level of response um, and I like to say at, at the right uh, price points as we think of just driving outstanding learning experiences. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I just thought of something else I would love to just ask you about because I think this is something, in fact, I just encountered it today in a presentation I did um, for some OD professionals. And that is, you seem to have really got a place at the table for learning and development. You were talking about it being really at the center. For people who are in organizations where that's, where L&D is maybe not as respected or isn't given as prominent position as it is at Merck, do you have any suggestions for what some of these um, folks can do to get more, not just recognition, get more attention to the importance of that L&D component within the context of the company? Yeah, I'm, I, might, I might say something that might not be very popular, right? Um, I think the first thing um, L&D uh, learning departments within um, corporations need to realize is that we are not in academia, right? We are not um, universities and, and higher ed. Um, and I don't mean that in any negative way at all, but maybe hopefully what I'll say next will follow through. Um, it is very important for l &D to understand how to speak with the business, right? Um, there, there's so many times that l &D departments will geek out and will use super crazy learning terms, right? On uh, the ph philosophy of, you know, how brains think and, and, um, and the impact of different learner styles. That is great. But at the end of the day, you have to find a way to translate um, the outcome of a successful uh, learning strategy ontology into what the business needs, right? So understand uh, the terminology that your business uses. Understand uh, the KPIs um, that your business uh, reports as high up to the boards, right, to, as, as success. Um, and find out how to translate l and strategy into language um, that your business and your business leaders will understand. I think if you do that very well, um, it will absolutely help to get you a seat at the table. That's great. Thank you so much. Johan, this has been so great. I so appreciate your opening the doors to what you've been doing there at Merck to really create journeys for leaders and employees alike where they can thrive and grow and develop and learn. And so for those who would like to connect with you, is there a best way for them to be able to connect with you and learn more about what you're, you're doing there at Merck? And also mention the report that you referenced earlier. Yeah, definitely uh, LinkedIn Learning. I spent a lot, sorry, not LinkedIn Learning, <laughs> LinkedIn. As you can tell, right, my, my whole philosophy on learning. Um, I spend a lot of time on LinkedIn, right, both on the LinkedIn platform and on, 
on, on the LinkedIn Learning um, assets side of the house. Um, if you'd like to get a hold of me, that would be the best uh, best opportunity. That's great. And the report that you mentioned earlier, that's you said that's on your website. I'd love to put that on your show notes page so people would be able to access that. I'll get that. Yeah. Um, our our ESG report is uh, published on our on our company website, and um, there is a really great uh, discussion there on just the impact of L and D and and um, some of the work we're doing with the industry. Thank you. That's great. Well, Johan, thank you so much for being with me today. It's been a pleasure having this conversation with you, and I want to acknowledge you and the great work that you're doing there at Merck to create opportunities for everybody to learn and grow. Absolutely. Thanks, Meredith. And I look forward to talking again. Thanks for tuning into my podcast. Now head over to growstrongleaders.com and check out our two books, Connect With Your Team and Peer Coaching Made Simple. While you're there, download the free facilitator guide to find out how to implement our unique peer coaching system. Until next time, I'm Meredith Bell.